Hello everyone, today I'll be talking about Andre Cortez, my favorite photographer, who lived from the years 1894 to 1984. He was generally underappreciated at the beginning of his career, but he is now widely regarded as one of the most influential photographers of the 20th century. Although his career has spanned over seven decades, I'll be presenting his early work from the years 1912 to 1929. But, in order to understand the works of Cortez, we must first understand a little bit about his background. Andor Cortez was born on July 2, 1894, in Budapest, Hungary. He was nicknamed Bandy by his close friends, which is a nickname meaning virile or manly. Growing up, Cortez had very little interest in schoolwork or in his job, and he instead preferred spending his time in rural areas, the ethnographic museum, or in the suburbs of Budapest. At around the age of six, Cortez found a calendar in his relative's attic. Just looking at those photographs in the calendar, he decided that he wanted to be a photographer one day. In 1912, when he was 17 years old, he had saved up enough money from his job at the stock exchange to buy his first camera, which was an ICA 4.5 by 6 centimeter glass plate camera, which probably looks something like the one on the slide. From then on, he began to spend his spare time photographing things around him, taking pictures of the Hungarian plains and locals in Budapest. Cortez's early work from the years 1894 to 1925 is referred to as the Hungarian period, where he spent his childhood and early adulthood. In this period, he learned the technical skills of photography himself through trial and error. The types of photographs he took in this era consisted of landscape photography, candid photography, and portraits. There are many photographs taken in this era, but I will be talking about the photographs that feel vital in understanding his body of work as a whole. This photograph is one of the first that he ever took. It is titled Sleeping Boy, and it depicts a sleeping boy in a restaurant in Budapest. While there are some technical faults in it, like the photograph being slightly out of focus and not exactly level, I think this picture shows that Cortez always knew what kind of photograph he wanted to take. If we examine this photograph more closely, we see soft, flattering lighting on the subject, diagonal lines on the wall that help bring your attention to the subject, as well as the subject itself being a boy asleep at a restaurant. Thoughtful lighting, angular composition, and capturing people in natural environments are all elements included in this photograph, and they are also all elements that Cortez would continue to explore and would eventually end up defining his body of work. This photograph was taken on the streets of Budapest in 1914. What stands out to me about this photograph is how Cortez captures the angularity of the Hungarian architecture and how the streetlights accentuate the texture of the buildings and the stone road. Another thing to note about this photograph is the use of silhouette. The silhouette of the man in this photograph is very defined, as is his shadow. The placement of the man's silhouette in this piece gives the photograph as a whole a great sense of depth and scale. This untitled photograph was taken by Cortez in 1917. One thing that I love about this picture is the use of composition and form. The frame is cut in half by the horizon, separating the sky from the small pond and road. On the bottom half of the frame, we have this group of ducks in a small puddle. The puddle that the ducks are in seems to act as a backdrop, a dark, reflective background for them to stand out against in contrast. And if we look at the top half of the image, the exact same thing is happening here. These trees stand out against the sky in the same way that the ducks stand out against the puddle. This is one of my favorites by Cortez because of its sense of equilibrium and balance, caused by the subjects of the photograph and how they reflect one another. This picture, titled Underwater Swimmer, although taken so early on in Cortez's career, is one of his most popular and widely appreciated works. One of the more obvious things about this photograph is the warped, distorted appearance of the subject, which is something Cortez would go on to study later on in his career. In addition to this, the use of refracted rays of light that help highlight the subject is phenomenal, and we can also see Cortez's style begin to change. The form of this photograph is very concise and very deliberate. The diagonal line that the diver is creating in this photograph to me almost seems like the diver is consciously diving through the frame, like he's aware of his place in this photograph, which I find incredibly compelling. The swimmer's firm and purposeful form seems to reflect Cortez's firm and purposeful use of framing in this photograph. This photograph, titled Bathing, was taken a couple years after Underwater Swimmer. 
It shows incredible ingenuity, and it was hard for me to wrap my mind around how this was taken at first. But if you flip the picture upside down, things become a little more clear. It's simply an upside down photograph of a man's reflection in clear water. But in turning the picture upside down, Cortez takes the altered, warped image of the man's reflection and makes that the subject of the photograph, which is as disorienting and initially confusing as it is innovative. This completely recontextualizes the photograph simply by turning the frame upside down, making the viewer question which image is a reflection and which is real. In September of 1925, Cortez left Hungary and moved to Paris, France. It was then that he changed his name from Andor to Andre, the name he kept for the rest of his life. He began to find commercial success in Paris, and he was commissioned often. He was actually the first photographer to ever have a one-man exhibition in the year 1927. In Paris, Cortez continued to experiment with different techniques and further refine his visual style. This picture was taken in 1927 and is one of his most popular photographs. Cortez captured the lightning strikes by using a manual exposure. If you look closely, you can actually see the lightning illuminating the sides of the Eiffel Tower, which I find very interesting. This picture is another one of his most popular works. This one stands out to me and is one I'm often revisiting because of its simplicity, but also because of its effective use of framing, light, shadow, and texture. There is a clean, defined shadow on the table left by both the fork and the bowl, and there's also a very imperfect scratch texture on the fork that I find is captured extraordinarily well. The contrast between the dark and light values in this piece is so drastic that it appears to have the same texture and visual elements as a charcoal drawing. This photograph is another one of the more innovative photographs in Cortez's body of work. It's titled Broken Plate, and oddly enough, the effect in this photograph was completely unintentional. Cortez took this photograph in 1929 while testing a new lens, but when he left France, the negative stayed there for 30 years and was damaged while being transported. In 1963, the negative was returned back to him, broken, and he decided to print it. The cracks in the glass plate produce a very precise webbed pattern, as if each crack were placed there intentionally. This photograph, titled Chimneys of Paris, shows just how much Cortez's style changed in the French period as opposed to the Hungarian period. In this photograph, Cortez makes use of patterns and form in French architecture, making the chimneys seem almost like reflections or photocopies of one another. This is another excellent photograph by Cortez. It exhibits phenomenal framing and fantastic use of negative space. The Roman numerals on the face of the clock, as well as the hands of the clock, act as the negative space in this photograph, and also frame the people on the street. This photograph also has a very voyeuristic element to it, given that it is a picture of a French street taken from behind the face of a clock. This picture was taken at Place Gambetta in Paris, in 1929. In his French period, Cortez seems to gravitate more towards finding patterns in architecture and nature than he did in his previous work, and that change of style is greatly shown here. One of the reasons I love this picture is because of the depth of field. The depth of field is so shallow in this photograph that the further away the lampposts get, the less sharp they appear. The repetition and the parallel placement of these lampposts make this effect more apparent. This is a great use of depth of field, and it's very unusual to see something like this in a landscape photograph, especially during this time period. This photograph is one of my favorites by Cortez because of the wonderful use of scale. Scale and shadow are both used incredibly masterfully here. This is another piece by Cortez that feels like it has a sense of equilibrium because of that similar shape of the Eiffel Tower as well as its own shadow. This picture also gives the Eiffel Tower a monumental sense of scale because as opposed to most pictures taken of the Eiffel Tower, it is taken on the inside of it so we can see its size in comparison to the size of the people walking beneath it firsthand. Cortez continued on from Paris, moving to New York in 1936, and continued taking photographs until his death in 1984. I would love to talk about many more of Cortez's photographs, but there are far too many to choose from. So, I have posted all my research material and photographs, as well as a copy of this presentation to a Google Drive folder. 
So if you scan this link, you can look at all the photographs I could find from Cortez, which is a little over 450 photographs. Also, if the date and location of the photographs are known, it is labeled as such. And I've placed the year of the photograph at the beginning of each file name, so you can look at the photographs chronologically if you'd like. I've also included articles, books, and an interview from BBC that I used to make this presentation. So thank you so much for your time, and I hope you enjoyed this presentation.